I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 15 years. This smile here today is the canvas that I have to begin with. And I'm gonna show you everything that goes into transforming it into a beautiful smile. So like and subscribe if you have teeth. You have to start the procedure by whitening the teeth because not all the teeth are going to get crowns in this case. You will need to match crowns at least a little bit to some of the natural teeth. And if you don't do that, the crowns that you make will kind of stand out. Now at the next appointment, we will be preparing the teeth for the crowns. We start by numbing the patient because we will file each tooth down at least one and a half millimeters all the way around the circumference of the teeth. Now, I normally start with the front two teeth, which happen to be the veneers in this case. And so we start by removing the veneers. By the way, these veneers are so dark because of stains that got under them a long time ago. Because the veneers are so old, they used an old type of cement that wasn't very good at sealing off foreign substances. So staining eventually leaked into these. Now you probably just saw, after putting slots in the veneers, we pry off the remaining pieces of porcelain. And you can see how the veneer pieces just shoot off. Any pieces that won't break off, we have to file away with the drill. Now you're probably noticing how yellow this underlying level called dentin is on the patient. The dentin is always more yellow than the outer enamel portion of the tooth. But this is actually an unusually intense yellow, which is why his teeth are so yellow. Now, filing the teeth down is necessary to prepare for crowns for a few reasons. Let's say you didn't file them down and just put crowns over the whole tooth. The teeth would stick out too far and be too bulky. This patient's front teeth already overlap the lower teeth too much. That overlap is called an overbite. The second issue would be if you put a tooth on top of the teeth without filing them down, when you close down, your bite would only hit on those crowns and you wouldn't be able to touch the rest of your teeth or chew at all. In other words, it would just feel really off. Now I am skipping quite a bit and fast forwarding through a lot of it, but eventually I will have a more full video of the procedure on my channel if you want to watch more of the details. Now you will notice that here we are only doing the upper front six teeth. The rule is the more teeth you do, the more you can completely change the look of the smile. However, when you want a big change in the smile, the front six teeth are normally the bare minimum. For smaller cosmetic issues like cosmetic fillings to get rid of white spots, you only need to do the teeth involved. But for a big change in the look of the teeth, you need to at least do the front six. Going back to filing the teeth down, we file off about a millimeter and a half of each tooth because that is the thickness of the new crown and we're creating a negative space that will eventually be filled in by those crowns. And if you don't file them down enough, they're likely to break when chewing or other normal activities happen at a minimized thickness. But another reason is the thicker the crown material, the more you can hide the discoloration of the underlying teeth. So there's some give and take. You have to file them down enough, but not too much because you file them down too much, then they can possibly break down the road as well. Okay, this is what the teeth look like when we are done filing them down. And I know it looks really odd, but this is the base from which we will build everything back up. And if you think you couldn't do this, just remember, there are tons of Hollywood stars out there who have crowns and veneers and this is what their teeth look like underneath. So to build everything back up, we have to start by taking impressions of these teeth and send them to a lab that will make the final cosmetic crowns. To take accurate impressions, we first have to stop the majority of the bleeding around the gums. And that's what this stuff that I'm applying now called Viscostat does. Once most of the bleeding has stopped, we then take an impression. The impressions have two layers a bulk layer, which here is the purple, and a fine layer, which is the orange here, to pick up the details of the teeth. Once the impression material is all set, this is what it will look like when you take it out of the mouth. And then this will be sent to the lab and used to make a model of the teeth on which the cosmetic crowns will be made. And so they can make accurate crowns, we have to get a shade that we want for these teeth. Now, you have some leeway. They don't have to be the same as all of the other teeth when you're doing the front six crowns. If you were just doing one tooth, they have to be the same as the other teeth right around them. But when you do six, 
they can be a little bit lighter than the rest of the teeth. That's why we were trying to get just as much whitening as we could from the teeth whitening process. For now, we make temporary crowns by using this plastic template that we made from impressions we took before we ever drilled on the teeth. So the temporary crowns will be fashioned after the original teeth and they won't be cosmetic until we get the final crowns back. We do this by filling that plastic template with a material that will fill the negative space between the plastic template and the prepped or stump of a tooth. Eventually that material will harden in the template while over the patient's filed down teeth. Since these temporary crowns are fashioned after the old teeth, we want them just to get us by until we get the final crowns in a few weeks. And once again, because this template was fashioned after his original teeth, these temporary crowns won't be cosmetic yet. However, the color of the temporaries will be wider than his original teeth. So in that case, they will be slightly more cosmetic when it comes to the color. That being said, it is possible to have more cosmetic temporaries than you will see here. But because of the extra cost, most patients opt for these makeshift temporaries that we're doing pattern after the original teeth. Now, in case you're wondering what I've been doing, we're taking that material that has hardened and we're smoothing out all the imperfections of the temporary in there a lot until we get it to look somewhat cosmetic. Once we have those temporary crowns looking pretty good, finally, we use temporary cement to attach the temporary crowns to the teeth. And we do this all as kind of one unit. These temporary crowns are what the patient is gonna use for a few weeks until we get those final crowns back. So once again, the lab takes those impressions and the shade and makes models of the teeth. And then in this case, they're going to make cosmetic crowns out of a material called Emax, which is a lithium disilicate ceramic, in case you're wondering. Now, my brother happens to be a dental lab technician that made these crowns, and I will put his lab in the description if you are a dentist and you want to request him. A few weeks later, once the lab technician is done, the patient returns. And we start this new appointment by taking off the temporary crowns. Most times the patient will not need to be numb for this appointment unless the teeth are really sensitive without the crowns on them or if the patient just feels more comfortable being numb for dental appointments. For the majority of this appointment, we try each of these teeth on one by one until we have them all on. We are checking five main criteria. First, we check how the adjacent teeth contact each other. You don't want it to be too tight or you can't floss between them, and you don't want it to be too light or they will get a lot of food caught between the teeth. Second, you are checking to make sure the crowns sit all the way down onto the margins of the teeth. So you want that junction or margin between the tooth and the crown to be seamless so that my instrument called an explorer just flows right over it. Okay, third, you want to make sure the crown's interior has a tight fit against the remaining stump of a tooth and doesn't rock when you put it all the way down. Fourth, you want to ensure that the crowns feel like they bite evenly with the rest of the natural teeth. If the bite feels like it hits a crown before the natural teeth, then that tooth can become sore over time and possibly even loose or even cause jaw problems as well. Fifth, we have to check the cosmetics. If the patient's happy and I'm happy, then that's all we gotta do for the cosmetics. But what you see me doing during all of this talking is me checking and making sure the adjustments to those crowns satisfy the five criteria that I have been explaining. Now, cosmetics are different for each person. With our patient here today, he was particular about the shape of his teeth. He wanted to ensure that the distal edges were sufficiently rounded and the crowns slightly wider than his remaining teeth. He did not want them to be the exact same color. What I tell all my cosmetic patients is that as long as you are patient, we will get your teeth exactly how you want if you have reasonable expectations. Sometimes that might take extra appointments. This patient, however, is happy, in fact, ecstatic with the cosmetics of the crown. However, let's say he wasn't pleased, then all we would have to do is just send the crowns back to the lab, make some adjustments, and then we would have them back to try and again. And if he was happy, then we'd cement them at that appointment. Now, sometimes the patient isn't sure if they're happy about the crowns. In that case, instead of cementing them with permanent crowns, we can kind of take them for a test drive and use temporary cement. 
And then when the patient comes back, if he likes them, we take out the temporary cement and then cement them with permanent cement. Now that's a long explanation, but the gist is if your patient will get them to be what you want them to be. And because our patient was completely happy with the cosmetics and the crowns all met the other four criteria, we cemented the crowns that day with permanent cement. We then clean off the excess cement and there you have it, the crowns are done. Now, some people really want white teeth and we could have gotten them wider if we were able to do more crowns on the teeth. But still, they are pretty white and don't stand out too much like they would if they were a little bit wider. So here are the before and afters on the day we first cemented the crowns into place from the day we started the crowns. Now the second thing you might be noting here is that the gums are pretty puffy from everything we did. They do settle down over time and luckily our patient came in again and we were able to take more pictures and video of the teeth a couple weeks later once the gums had settled down. And you can see how cosmetic and how natural they look at this point. You got yourself a confident, natural looking smile ready to impress people and take pictures at the wedding that he's going to. Watch my daily dental care video I have posted now for the best technique, tips, and product recommendations for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay, gum disease, and gives you fresh breath. The best dental products that I recommend are an Amazon affiliate links in the description below, or you can order them from the store below if you are on a handheld device. And then you don't even have to leave YouTube to order those. If in Southern California, my dental office is in the description as well. Like and subscribe to my channel if you have teeth.